How we doing today? I want to give a message out today. I, I need people to really know what's going on today. You guys need to go to Joel 3 and 1. And it says that the Lord is going to gather his people from the four corners of the earth. But another thing he's going to do, he said he's going to gather all the armies of the earth. Right now, people are walking around sleepwalking. When the Lord said he's coming like a thief in the night, they're going to be evening, sleeping, marrying, and partying. And right now, you got all these churches that are failing. And now, you got also another thing going on that people are not aware of. I don't know if you're just sleeping on this. Uh, when you go to Zephaniah, the Lord says something. Um, and he says it also in Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah 51, he says he's going to fill America with men like caterpillars. And right now, the borders are open. And now that the borders are open and then America's being filled with men like caterpillars, you have another sect of people or men who are going over into what we call Texas and those areas. And what they're saying is, you know what we're going to do? We're going to block these people from coming in to a country that, that, that is not theirs. But those same people who are blocking those people who are trying to get in, what they're doing is this. They forgot something. They forgot that they themselves are immigrants. The original people are the so-called Negroes, the so-called colored black or indigenous people, the Indians. We are the indigenous people. Another thing, they do not know what they're doing, but the Lord showed me this. He showed me those walls that they're all going to rush and they're rushing, you understand, to build. And they're building these walls up around them. And they're building these walls up and they're all rushing to go with a frantic. The Lord is doing this not by force, not by might, but the spirit. He's got them to build these walls. But see, in their minds, in their minds, they're keeping people from out from coming into the Americas. But what they do not know, this is what they do not know. Jeremiah chapter 51 tells you that when he fills America with men like caterpillars, what does a caterpillar do? It sits, it goes with a cocoon and, and then it morphs. And then all of a sudden it springs forth. And then you learn that the Lord says that these men that are going to come out in Jeremiah, when he talks about these things, they're going to turn on what? The door to Babylon. So the door to Babylon is America. And so what they don't realize, these walls that they're building, they're actually building walls to keep themselves locked in. So when these caterpillars spring out and they go to try to run to this place and that place, they've already built up walls where they can't even go. Do you not understand that in April the 8th, that there is a comet or what you would call a um, meteor coming by or a comet coming by? And when it comes by, it's going to cross America. It's going to make the Tav. The Tav symbol is the end of the Hebrew alphabet. It means the end. The, the number that correlates with it is 400, which means 400 years of slavery is over. So what they don't understand is all of these things are happening not by force, not by might, but with the spirit. And so the Lord is truly right now filling America with men like caterpillars. He's got also these so-called people who came and took the indigenous children's land, rushing to Texas, and they're rushing there to build walls up to keep these other people out, even though they came in themselves as immigrants. Another thing what they truly don't understand is this, that the scriptures say that a house divided cannot stand. So now you've got the governor, the president saying, you know what? I'm going to send military forces and I'm going to send them down to Texas. And what I'm going to do is make sure that they don't do things they should. So now you've got the government fighting against government. You see, a house divided cannot stand. All of this is biblical prophecy. When you read the book of Obadiah, the Lord said the grape gatherers came, but did they not leave you some grapes? If a man rob you a house, would he not leave you something? How the ways of Esau, Edom thought out. They leave you nothing. So saying that, the Lord knew a long time ago that they would not give us reparations. The Lord knew a long time ago that things would not be done equally. You understand? You see, when you do crime, one crime, you understand, has a different weight than another crime. If you sit and you take a people's heritage, their gods, and if you take their land, you see, the way you amass wealth is with land. With that land, you can buy, sell. You can even go borrow for that land. But if you've got a people who've taken all the land, then they come take all the gold, all the silver, all the wealth, and then killed off 75% of that people after they took everything. Would you not think they want to give them something back, a few grapes? Huh? If they're in their house, would they not leave them a kettle, a pot, leave them something? Hmm? They not only take the pot, but they take the cup to drink out of it too. So saying that, there's a judgment coming. Read the book of Obadiah. 
There's a judgment coming not on just on, on, on Edom, but the whole world. Read Ezekiel 38, 39, 40, 41. Start at 34. Start reading these scriptures and wake up out of this deep sleep. The Bible says also that money is going to be thrown in the streets. Do you guys not understand that right now as we speak, bricks, bricks, get this. They're getting ready to roll the dollars out soon. And get this, America cannot comprehend the the impact that it's going to have because the only dollar that's back our dollar is only backed by what the petrol dollar which is the money that's coming from the saudis from their oil now the saudis is going with bricks they get 55 dollars they're all one so they don't care anything about america now let's get into the red sea what's happening in the red sea when you read Jeremiah, Lord, Jeremiah, he talks about how he's going to send ships and the men are going to come through the Red Sea. All of this is playing out right now. When we read about the Valley of Jehoshaphat and, and we go into Zephaniah and Zephaniah tells you that Gaza is going to be taken away, Palestine and all these places. All these things are happening right now. Why? Because no one's reverencing the Lord's holy name. And one of the main things going on, no one is recognizing the Lord's children. So just like in Egypt, when he put the 10 plagues on the Pharaoh and the last plague he put was the Pharaoh and he did, he did a battle against the Pharaoh and his armies and the men that they worship as gods, which was the Pharaoh, the Lord's doing the same thing in the Americas and the four parts of the earth. He's going through the whole earth and cleaning it out right now. Why? For his holy name and for his children's sake. That's why he says that Israel means inside. And so the Lord is showing everybody right now not only who these so-called people who are supposed to be the people of the promise, but he's actually showing you guys from the words that his children are truly speaking, from them standing on their feet today, letting you know who they are, who we are. Biggest thing we're letting people know is who he is. And then we're going through our books of our prophets to show you the times you're in. Remember, many are called, but only a few will be chosen. And so right now, in order for you to be chosen, you can no longer take blood, put on the hyssop, Put on the doorpost and let the hour of death pass you by. That was the first gathering. This time, you got to have Yeshua's blood because he died for who? Read Matthew 23. He said, I only came for the house of Israel. He came to die for his people. But later, because it's transgression of his people, it was opened up to Gentiles. These are what we would call the handmaids and servants that are going to serve in the kingdom. It was opened up to them so that they could get it right. And so, therefore, they started taking on our gods. They started talking about the Messiah. They started talking about Yahuwah. They started talking about the scriptures. They started breaking out the Bible. They reverence the Lord more than we. And that's why he put them over us. He made the first last and the last first. But now he's going to take the last and he's restoring them so they can become first. Wake up and know what's going on around you. Gog, Magog, and Moab. Russia, Iran, and China, they're here. They're in the Reds. They're, they're out by the Valley of Jehoshaphat which is by Jerusalem. They're getting ready to do their thing. We know the Red Sea, as Jeremiah talked about, the ships coming through right now doing their thing. So we know also that the dollar is about to crash and it's going to in order for them to go ahead and enact what we call the fiat system or the, or the electronic system. And that's why the Bible says money will be thrown in the streets. So all things are coming to fruition. But what we need to do right now at this time is to stop bickering about little things that are non-tangible, things that mean nothing. Well, we got to think about this. We got to think about what we need to do to save our souls when he comes back this second time. Because he's coming back soon. The Lord said he's going to be eating, sleeping, marrying, and partying. And I'm going to come like a thief in the night. It's going to be on a dark and a cloudy day. Darkness, what does it mean? No laws. Why does it say cloudy? Because they'll take the, they take bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. And people take salt for sugar and sugar for salt. Everything's turned upside down. Everything's distorted. Everything's in a cloudy vision. So now you got to get that word, pick up that Bible, so you can put those spiritual bifocals on so you can see through that cloudy day. Because when he comes back, if you don't have oil in your lamp, if you do not have any oil on that wick, that means he cannot see you. And that means when the bridegroom come back, guess what? He's going to pass you by because you have no light in you. Many you call, few are chosen. Be blessed. And by all means, read these books and know it's all playing out as we speak.